Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to be talking about causal will therapy or curing the insanity of free will belief. This is going to be a good show because um, ordinarily, you know, the shows that I do are kind of like to help the world understand the nature of our will, you know, overcome this, this belief in, um, in free will. And that's actually what this show is about also, but this is also about, you know, my personal experience with it, which is very cool. Okay, um, before I do this, before I go into this theme, I want to just, as I u always do, because it's like, you know, it's like, it is the show, you know, basically, I want to explain why free will is impossible, it's an illusion, a myth, and then why, you know, this is like so profoundly important to, to our future, to our, to our present and our future, actually. Okay. Um, and I, first, let me, let me start off by defining what people mean when they say that we have a free will. Okay, um, the term free will means that we would be free to decide to do whatever we want. You know, um, eat whatever we want, um, go wherever we want, whatever. Just any kind of an action or decision. But that the term free will would mean that it would be free of any, anything that's not in our control. Um, think about that. A free will thought has to be free of anything that's not in our control. And one way to, to understand how that's impossible is that, like, let's say you're, um, uh, let me try to, nah, nah, all right. I want to just go with the causal, uh, causality model, just the idea that basically um, we live in a causal universe, that things happen for a reason, and this is why um, free will is impossible. So again, we've got the definition that free will means that we can decide whatever we want, regardless of anything that is compelling us to do anything, regardless of anything that is in, that's not in our control causing us to do whatever. So the basic reason why free will is an illusion is because everything has a cause. There is a reason that everything happens. Um, nothing happens without a reason. And it's like, this is like so simple. It's, it's like such a prof simple truth. And it's not just a simple truth, it's a profoundly essential truth. Um, when you think of the statement, everything has a cause applied to the entirety of the universe, that means like that nothing happens without it being caused. That, you know, the universe, that one state of the universe coming from the, a previous one, coming from a previous one. It's all causal. It, you know, everything that happens in the universe has to have a cause. Otherwise, if there were no causes, if things, you know, didn't have causes, um, I can't imagine that. How, how could something not have a cause? Um, there's actually, there's actually a, um, a kind of I mean, there, there's a question in, in, in theology. I, I'm not sure which, which camera is on. Anyway, I think it's two. There's a question in theology of like, you know, well, you know, is there a first cause? Or theology, logic, whatever, philosophy. Um, is there a first cause? And um, I don't know. That transcends reason. Who knows? Who knows? It, it would seem because like when you try to answer that question, you know, if, if you know, you've come up with the first cause, call it God or whatever, then you'd have to say, all right, fine. But like, what? Did, did, um, did that first cause always exist? Because if it did, let's say it's, it's God, let's say we say it, it was God and God always existed. Well, then that would mean that God is actually the universe or everything. And, you know, <clears throat> it's... That would mean that, that there actually isn't a first cause because if, if like if there's a, a God that's eternal that's that's creating a first cause, you see how like you know that wouldn't um, provide for a first cause. But anyway, aside from that, aside from this you know speculation as to you know causes, like if there's a first cause after that, you know since the Big Bang, certainly since the four billion years that the planet has been in existence everything in our world has a cause. And again, that's, that's the reason um, free will is impossible. Okay, I do, I wanna, get, I wanna um, get right into the theme now. Okay, here's the thing. Um, when we hold a free will perspective, 
we will blame people for stuff. I mean, people will do things. We are not perfect. <laughs> you know, think about it. If we had a free will, if we had a free will, we would be perfect because we would, you know, of our own. Because, like, we, we value goodness. We value doing the right thing and stuff. But a lot of times we don't. A lot of times we can't. And it's because we don't have a free will that we can't. That we have this kind of, like, imperfect nature because it's not our nature, um, in a sense. All right, but, so like the problem with the belief in free will is that we blame. We blame ourselves, we blame others. And, and okay, now in my life personally, I, I, I understand this, but, you know, because a lot of people will say to themselves, fine, free will is an illusion, big deal, it just doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> it just doesn't matter. But it matters profoundly because like, all right, in my experience, Somebody does something that I consider wrong, immoral, whatever it is. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay. Um, my first tendency is to kind of like attribute this action to the person, you know. And like, you know, my first tendency might be to kind of like, let's say, become angry. Because anger, you know, in psychology is like it's a reaction to a perceived injustice, you know. So it's a basic, you know, re -angered reaction to something we consider is like unjust, morally wrong, whatever. All right, <laughs> excuse me. Um, all right, so under this free will perspective, I'm blaming this person. You know, and what's that do? That does, that one, it, 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 um, it's not an unpleasant feeling to blame, to, to feel angry. You know, I mean, sometimes we can enjoy feeling anger, but in general, it's, it's much more pleasant to not feel it. It's one of the negative emotions, you know. Um, the other thing that happens is like to the extent that we focus on the other person and the blame, we're just, we're, we become distracted for the reasons, you know, like why did the person do, do what the person did and all. So, so here's how it's working out in my life. So like I come, you know, um, an experience where somebody does something that, um, that I consider wrong happens and I'm getting so much better at more quickly reminding myself that, wait a minute, this person does not have a free will. This person was completely compelled to do whatever they did, and it would just be, be completely wrong, illogical, insane for me to blame the person, for me to take it out on the person, in a sense. I mean, and granted, you know, sometimes we'll, you'll say, well, you know, the guy's going out, you know, going <laughs> to kill you or something, you, you know, you, you have to, like, defend yourself. Sometimes it just doesn't matter, you know, that a person has a free will or not. You know, you have to act in certain ways. But in general, most, 99.999% of the things that happen don't reflect that kind of reality. Um, so what happens, like, you know, for example, all right, so I, in my experience, somebody does something wrong, okay? Then I'll, I'll you know, the anger will be much quicker now because I'm getting so much better at just catching myself or remind myself, wait a minute, that person doesn't have a free will. Then what happens? Then I start thinking to myself, all right, so... So basically, God, the universe, whatever is running this, you know, the causal past, more technically, physically, made that person do that. <laughs> and then so, then, so then I asked myself, well, why, you know, why could that have been? You know, why, why would the universe do this? What is it? Is it a lesson? Is it a punishment? There, you know, there might be some reason. And I may nev never know, all right? Who, who knows? But the idea is like that my focus goes from blaming the person and accusing the person and indicting the person and maybe aggressing toward the person toward trying to figure out what, why the person did what he did. Okay, um, so that's, that's kind of like how it works on a personal level right now. Let's say if you understand that free will is an illusion, but let's say the world you know, doesn't just quite get it yet. You know, we're still in, in this world. Fine, so that, that, <clears throat> that kind of, um, that helps you. That helps you to not go to the angry place, to not go to the place of blame. And, and you, you use this on yourself also. I mean, like, you know, for example, like, you know, I'll do stuff that's wrong, you know, throughout the day that, that I, you know, in hindsight, I said, gee, I wish I wouldn't have done that, whatever. And, like, in the past, I would kind of, like, you know, feel guilty, you know, blame myself. Or, uh, you, you get the point. So n now I don't do that <laughs> as much. All right. But, all right, so now, like, again, this is like for a world where, let's say, you understand that free will is an illusion, but nobody else does, or most people don't. 
Um, now let's imagine a world where, and this could be a year from now, two years, who knows, where everybody gets it. You know, the world just awakens to the reality that free will is a myth, free will is an illusion, our, our wills are completely causal, we're robots, puppets, you know, call us what you want to, but that's, life is a movie, okay? Everybody gets it. So, now we can, we can imagine this kind of scenario playing out like somebody does something to get me angry. I kind of like remind myself very quickly that the person doesn't have a free will, so I'm asking, so I might ask them, hey, why did you do that, you know? And now here's the, th here's the difference. In, in the current paradigm, the, the person might try to defend himself, whatever, and actually, no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, no, no, <laughs> under, under the causal will perspective, I wouldn't ask him, why did you do that? This is key. Under the causal will perspective, I would ask him, why do you think the universe compelled you to do that? That's key. Because all of a sudden, now we, we, we go from being adversaries, potential adversaries to this, in this, to being on the same side, being kind of allies, trying to figure this out. So... So I ask him, why do you think the universe made you do that? And we're not even like discussing the right or wrong of it. And so this person, again, you know, we're living in a world where everybody already, you know, finally understands that, that free will is an illusion, you know, human will is causal. He'll, he'll be completely comfortable with that. He'll, he'll you know, he'll say, um, he'll answer, you know, he may know, he may not. You know, he may say, well, it was because the universe compelled you to do something previously that made me react in that way. Okay? So it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of, basically what's happening is like we're acknowledging our role in what's happening, you know, um, maybe, you know, my leading the person to do something, the person doing something, whatever, and then my reaction to the person. But we're not, um, we're not taking the perspective of blame. We're just, we're focusing on what, actually happened and why it happened, okay? Because that's really what matters. Um, this is very cool. It really is. Okay, I think you get that. I want to go back to um, some more of, because like, basically, you know, I think I pretty much just described this. We've got another 15 minutes left. And um, it's, yeah, I'm, I'll talk, it's amazing. It is like, you know, because like I've done various kinds of, um, Oh, um, wait a minute. No, this, this show is about causal will therapy. Because, uh, all right, you understand the concept now, right? Now, what I'm planning to do, I was going to do it this morning, but just I've been doing so much work recently that, you know, things not, have not been moving along as quickly as I'd like. But anyway, what I'm planning to do relatively soon, maybe as soon as tomorrow, is I'm going to start a causal will therapy meetup. And because, like, I, if, if you're not familiar with, with what a meetup is, it's like, meetup is like an online internet computer kind of like a website where you arrange to meet with people in person. You know, you're not like living a virtual reality, you know, online. So anyway, so this, this meetup um, is going to focus on this aspect of it. It's going to, it's not going to be, you know, I have another meetup in Manhattan exploring the illusion of free will, same as this um, title. And we, we, we explain why free will is an illusion. We go into the implications of, of what it means like this show, but mainly it's about understanding that. But this, this particular meetup, this, you know, this causal will therapy modality that I'm, I think, developing, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody else is, is doing this. I don't know. But um, it's, it's, about, it's about understanding that, um, that to the extent that you understand that free will is an illusion, that it's an insane belief, you gain emotional health. You gain sanity. You gain, well, what, what is emotional health for? It's for happiness. You gain happiness by that perspective. So, so yes, I mean, this is very cool. Um, it's... My God, when you think about it, think about it, the whole world, I mean, actually there was a survey that I, um, that I read recently in New Scientist, a New Scientist magazine referred to it. It said that across the world, about 30% of the population don't believe in free will. You know, they understand that, that um, reality and human will must be causal. 30%, but that's 70% that still don't. 
And here in the United States, I would imagine that would be like at least 90, I would think. Because, you know, I have a feeling these, these, um, the people who understand free will to be illusion, an illusion uh, live more in, in kind of like the Buddhist con countries where they have that, you know, principle of cause and effect and karma being more related. Now, even within, I just want to say just as an aside that even within Buddhism, there are some people who understand that the absolute truth is that everything is cause and effect, meaning the free will is an illusion, but they kind of like act as if. And I kind of like, or, or they, they do it to, no, no, some of them actually like say that, yes, we do have a free will, but that's, that's just a conventional understanding. That's kind of like to, to encourage people to kind of like take responsibility. But again, when it comes to blame, then, then it's not a, a good perspective. <laughs> um, all right, let's see, um, 11 minutes left. Um, so yeah, this, this thing, again, we've got, um, in the United States, almost everybody's insane about this. And what happens, like, we're all going around blaming each other for, for whatever, for everything, blaming ourselves. And it's crazy. It is insane. It's absolutely insane. It could be, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of um, emotional disorders, you know, delusions, uh, paranoias, all this stuff, you know, that, that we recognize as such within the mental health community, um, medicine and all. But, <laughs> this the idea that, that our human will is actually causal and we insanely believe it to be free, you know, this is not within the, um, within the literature on, on emotional illness because, <laughs> because I, would, I would imagine that most of the doctors that, um, that you know, develop the criteria for the various kinds of illnesses and, and um, you know, um, malfunctions of, of reasoning and psychology. They, they probably, um, they probably believe that we have free will. And, and the reason I'm saying that, because like, you would think doctors would, would tend to kind of like get it right. Um, but, um, but I don't know. Um, see, with, with, with understanding this is a very political topic, you know, like for, for a doctor, for example, to, um, to promote this idea that we have, that we don't have a free will. Well, I don't know, it's just like, it's kind of like with colleges, like with, with colleges, you have like about 50% of, let's say, donations that people give going to either colleges or religious institutions. So if you're a professor, you know, at a college or university, you're kind of like going a bit out on a limb telling students that, um, that they don't have a free will. So doctors, I think, are in a similar kind of a bind, you know, um, trying to explain that one. I guess it's really not necessary to their general <laughs> functioning. But again, when, when you relate this question, when you, you relate what they do, let's say the, the uh, clinicians, the, uh, the psychiatrists, psychologists who come up with, uh, with these names these criteria for the various disorders that they assign to us. Um, they haven't gotten to this one yet. And <laughs> this, the funny thing about this one is that, like, this is probably the biggest delusion in the world. I mean, people have different kinds of delusions. I don't know, delusions of grandeur, delusions of persecution, whatever it is. But, but um, I don't think they compare to this one. This one is so huge. So that's so like causal will therapy. I'm um, I'm excited to get that started. But all right, and we've got another eight minutes. Um, I'm gonna yeah, I'll get back to like this experience. How doing this show? Okay, this is like episode number thirty-seven. Okay, <laughs> and um, I mean I don't know if this is a result of like my perspective on human will or or just like the realization that the show has really pretty much accomplished its goal that right now what I'm doing is just like speeding it along. So, so and that's, that's the reason, for example, like why I didn't prepare all that much for this show. You know, it's just like I have the titles for this show and the next two shows that I'm taping after this. I just want to like, um, the idea is like, okay, if, if I go under the free will belief, then, you know, then like, all right, if the show goes, I, I want the show to go really, really well, maybe not just because of the good it might do, but for my own personal like feelings of ego and then doing stuff, whatever. 
But to the, to the extent that, um, that I remind myself that free will is an illusion, that everything is causal, and I apply that to myself, um, then all of a sudden, yeah, um, what, what happens is like everything becomes much more calm. You know, yeah, I'll screw up. Yeah, um, you know, I'll make mistakes. The show's not going to be as good as I would want if I had a free will. But, you know, so I get it. And, and the more I get it, the more comfortable it, you know, because think about it. You know, like how many people wouldn't do a show like this because they, you know, it'd be too intimidating for whatever reason, you know? But, and a lot of it is going to be tied up with the ego. Oh, what are they, you know, I'm going to screw up. What are they going to think? What am I going to think? So, yeah, getting, getting rid of the illusion of free will does relax a person, <laughs> does um, evoke positive feelings. Um, okay, um, I want to just review because um, it's in a very, very important point. The, the idea is, one, if you want to use this kind of causal will therapy on yourself and on your family and friends, because remember, if you're not getting angry with them for what, they're do, what they do, and if you want, might want to teach this to them, and you're kind of like operating within this perspective, it's going to be more pleasant for you. But um, if you want to understand this, what happens is basically you just like understand the free will is an illusion, okay? The, the um, causal will is what, you know, causal reality is what reigns, you know, what our, our wills are causal. Um, once you understand it, you want to just, um, you want to integrate it. You want to condition yourself based on this understanding. Because the reason I'm saying this is like, you might completely get that the free will is an illusion, but in your everyday life, somebody does something wrong, you consider wrong. And you, you know, this, this, this knowledge you have, the free will is an illusion, just like is not there. Because you know it, but you haven't conditioned yourself to apply it yet. So, so what happens is, yeah, so wh what in, in order to use this better, um, most effectively, do that. Like, um, catch yourself. Anytime you, you um, begin to feel angry at anyone for anything, it doesn't matter what it is. Before you go into anything else, you know, addressing it, thinking about it, remind yourself. Remind yourself that that person had no choice but to do what they did, that that person does not have a free will. That person is blameless. You know, it's, the person's blameless. Um, if, if the person was doing something good, the person would be um, creditless, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, all right, so th when you do that, when you do that, then notice the feeling. No notice what happens. Like, you remind yourself, wait a minute. This person is not responsible for what I'm angry at him about, so I should, like, stop being angry at him. I may want to be angry at the universe that caused them to be that way. But again, um, you will notice that if you do that, what should happen is the anger toward the person should dissipate. And what happens with me, this is kind of curious, because then I start, you know, becoming angry at God and the universe and I haven't delved into this, whether that's a kind of a good thing or not. I don't like to get angry with anything, anyone. <laughs> so, but, um, but the idea is like, okay, you can also consider, you know, along with this causal will therapy that, um, you know, maybe God doesn't have a free will. You know, maybe the universe doesn't have free will. That, that seems to be the most... Um, the most reasonable, sane, and scientific um, description of God and, and the universe, that, that everything is causal, everything is determined. What's happening now is the direct, direct, excuse me, direct result of what happened at the, um, at the point of the Big Bang. Okay, so, so like with God, um, so all right, you go from, you remind yourself that the person didn't have a free will. You... Um, you stop being angry with the person. You remind yourself, wait a minute, if it's not the person's doing, it's God's or the universe. Then you remind yourself, wait a minute, the universe probably doesn't have a free will either. So all of a sudden, you, you, you know, this anger all of a sudden has no um, object or subject, object. <laughs> it has no object, okay? It's not, you can't direct it toward the person logically. You can't direct it to yourself naturally. You can't direct it toward um, the universe. And um, 
So basically, we've got about two more minutes left. And so like this causal will therapy, I predict, will usher in a, an age of true emotional health. Absolutely, because if you've got, if you've got, let's say in the United States, over 90% of the people believing they have a free will and acting upon that belief, you know, anytime anybody does anything wrong, anytime, you know, they do anything that, that gets them angry, you can understand how dysfunctional our world is. I mean, it, it's a great world in a lot of ways, but compared to how it could be, it, when, God willing, fate willing, we collectively get over this illusion, so that's the thing. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so I'll start the meetup, and, um, and I'm going to continue to explore this. Because, like, again, you know, as I mentioned before, I have, most of my experimentation has been about, like, reminding myself that the other person doesn't have a free will to, to prevent, you know, prevent the, the um, anger for that. But I'm going to start actually reminding myself that, wait a minute, you can't blame God or the universe either. Now, I, I'm not sure how that will work out, but I have a feeling it will work out really well. I have a feeling that it will just like, you know, without a reason for the anger, then the anger will lessen, and that will condition me to kind of like, as we go into the future, become less and less angry, and we can all do this. All right, so um, we're running down now. We've got about 44 seconds, and um, what, do I, what, do I, what do I want to say? Oh, do, uh, let me do a commercial for my show. My friend, um, the messenger, uh, who lives in Manhattan, he's, he's producing a show called Myth of Free Will. I'm on it. It's on 11 o'clock every Wednesday night on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. You have to ordinarily live in Manhattan to get it, but you can get it on the Internet. So if you go to the website of this show, Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, causalconsciousness.com, you'll see a link for that show. So again, 11 o'clock um, Wednesday nights. It's a live show. Call in. Okay, I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next time on Exploring the Illusion of Free Will.